the most terrifying and captivating secrets do not only exist beyond the universe, in the distant regions of space, but also right beside us, in the oceans. Surprisingly, human exploration has covered almost the entirety of Mars and the Moon, while only about 5% of the oceans have been explored. This oversight is concerning, as we have overlooked the profound mysteries within our very own homeland. Alongside the discovery of super-oceans, extraterrestrial planets brimming with water beyond our universe, humanity will need a deeper understanding of the fundamentals of life on their own planet to search for and observe signs of life on other planets. Today, we'll embark on a journey through vast seas and explore locations deeper than the Mariana Trench. So buckle up and secure your seatbelts. We're about to dive into the mysteries beneath the cold waters right now, ocean challengers. While thousands of mountaineers have successfully climbed Everest, only two individuals have descended to the deepest point on the planet, Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench of the Pacific Ocean. The layers of water more than 11 kilometers deep are truly a marvel and a challenge. The oceans, which cover about three-four of Earth's volume, and are a vital component of the planet's vibrant life when viewed from the moon and neighboring planets, remain largely unexplored. They are both familiar and mysterious, evoking fear and curiosity in humans about the secrets they conceal, especially the forms of life that only exist in dreams. The first life on Earth emerged from water, giving the oceans a sense of pride and defiance against humanity, who were known for their indomitable spirit. Therefore, humanity has set out to conquer the highest peak inverted beneath the ocean's depths, the Mariana Trench. Located in the Western Pacific Ocean, east of the Philippines and about 200 kilometers east of the Mariana Islands, the Mariana Trench is a scar-like feature in Earth's crust that stretches over 1,500 miles, 2,550 kilometers, in length and averages 43 miles, 69 kilometer in width. The distance between the ocean surface and the deepest point of the trench, Challenger Deep, located about 200 miles, 322 kilometer, southwest of the U.S. territory of Guam, is nearly seven miles, 11 kilometer. If Mount Everest were dropped into the Mariana Trench, its peak would still be over a mile, 1.6 kilometers underwater. Due to its extreme depth, the Mariana Trench is perpetually shrouded in darkness with temperatures just above freezing. The water pressure at the bottom of the trench is 8 tons per square inch, about a thousand times the standard atmospheric pressure at sea level. Pressure increases with depth, reaching its maximum at 11,034 meters. The first time humans descended to the Challenger Deep area was over 50 years ago. It was an adventurous expedition undertaken by Jacques Picard and U.S. Navy Lieutenant Don Walsh in 1960. After descending to the ocean floor aboard the U.S. Navy's submersible named Trieste, the two spent about 20 minutes at the bottom, but unfortunately, no photographs were taken as the sediment stirred up by their passage created clouds of silt. To date, only four individuals have ventured to the Challenger Deep area. Besides Picard and Don Walsh, the other two are filmmaker James Cameron, 2012, and ocean explorer Victor Vescovo, aboard The Vessel Limiting Factor, 2019. The delay in exploring the oceans, especially the Mariana Trench, reflects the significant danger posed by the deep waters. Perhaps exploring the depths of the oceans is far more challenging than climbing Everest or venturing into space. There are numerous risks involved in deliberately piloting an exploration vessel into the forbidden territories of the ocean. With the tremendous pressure at the deepest levels, one could be crushed instantaneously if the vessel and equipment aren't sufficiently robust to withstand the harsh conditions. The recent incident involving the Titan submarine might give you a glimpse into that. Due to poor design and safety standards, Titan met a tragic end. At a depth of 4,000 meters, the vessel's hull cracked under the immense water pressure, reaching up to 400 kiligos in Semtantu and immediately imploded in a catastrophic explosion. The five occupants aboard the submersible perished instantly, unaware of the impending danger, 
as the explosion occurred rapidly rather than being slowly crushed, as depicted in movies. It's certain that the victims' bodies will not be found as the water pressure would pulverize their remains. And that's just at a depth of 4,000 meters. Similarly, other issues such as freezing in the 1 2 degree environment or oxygen deprivation, lack of heating systems, are entirely possible. Furthermore, piloting a submarine dive into the Challenger Deep Area also poses many risks related to human exploration, such as hypothermia and hyperthermia phenomena. When diving to greet depths like the Mariana Trench, the water temperature drops rapidly due to human perception of coldness, plummeting from bath-like temperatures on the surface to chilling cold like a meat locker below. Water, at great depths, can have temperatures close to freezing, causing hypothermia in divers. In this condition, the body cannot maintain normal temperature and may experience symptoms like shivering, loss of motor control, or even loss of consciousness. On the other hand, the use of protective gear such as diving suits, including thermal protection equipment, can lead to overheating due to the body's reaction to the extremely cold water temperature at depth, causing the body temperature to rise. This poses risks of dehydration and heat stroke. This is why ocean exploration missions are extremely hazardous. Nevertheless, we will continue to explore the Mariana Trench in the near future because the knowledge of the organisms and the functioning of the ecosystem at the seabed may reveal more about the processes that have shaped the complex and diverse life on Earth as we know it today. Strange Creatures of the Ocean Picard and Walsh's historic dive partially answered the scientific community's question. Can life exist under such extreme pressure? If so, how? Before 1960, it was believed that high pressure would dissolve calcium, making it impossible for vertebrates to exist as their bones would literally dissolve. No bones, no fish. However, nature has repeatedly proven scientists wrong, showcasing the seemingly infinite creative potential and adaptability of life. Today, we have moved beyond the initial questions about oceanic matters and encountered many other issues. With exploration tools, evidence has shown that life exists even in the deepest parts beneath the ocean, in all shapes and sizes. Not only does life exist, but it has evolved to levels that can unsettle and intimidate humans. A place with no sunlight, crushing pressure and near freezing temperatures is not the desolate wasteland that one might expect it to be. Instead, it is populated with a huge variety of life that takes shape in ways that our terrestrial minds can barely comprehend. There have been a total of 4,700 living creatures found in the world's deepest seas, many of which exist at the bottom of the ocean. Some creatures of the deep have enormous piercing eyes, others have no eyes at all, while still others have eyes inside their transparent domed heads. Some glow for defense or predation. The food chain becomes unpredictable at these depths where photosynthesis cannot occur. Some creatures typically classified as filter feeders have evolved into unlikely terrifying carnivores. Others have become such effective predators that their mouths are bigger than the rest of their entire body or possess teeth that pierce the darkness in every direction. From the ethereal to the spooky, the dark sea holds a world of adaptations that jars the imagination, and the deeper you go, the creepier it seems to get. In recent years, deep sea submersibles and unmanned underwater vehicles have captured glimpses of peculiar creatures such as shrimp-like amphipods and translucent animals known as holothurians. These are bottom feeders, consuming organic matter from seabed detritus. They typically have flattened or cylindrical bodies, soft and flexible, often encased in a smooth skin. Some species can emit light in the darkness, and many have the ability to produce toxins for self-defense. Holothurians are not the only unique inhabitants of the Mariana Trench. Recently, scientists from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, 
discovered a peculiar creature in the Mariana Trench fissure on April 24th at a depth of 3,600 meters, dubbing it the UFO jellyfish. They are predatory animals with a rather peculiar feeding mechanism. Studies have shown that this species remains motionless and waits for prey to touch its tentacles filled with venom before attacking. Bright red and yellow stripes marking the reproductive organs on their bell are quite vivid and may glow. Due to its distinctive appearance, American scientists have humorously given it another name, Microsoft Paint, reminiscent of the popular software on Windows operating systems. In the Mariana Trench, not only peculiar creatures live, but giant viruses have also been discovered. This includes the Mimi virus, found in sediment layers at 11,000 meters. Scientists had previously failed to collect viruses from the Challenger Deep, but five years ago, the research vessel Zhang Jian successfully completed its mission and obtained samples, including genetic material from 15 types of viruses and over 100 other microorganisms. When the Mimi virus was first discovered in 1992, scientists initially mistook it for bacteria because of its size, which can reach up to 700 nanometers and is sometimes visible to the naked eye. In some experiments, this giant virus has been shown to cause damage to cell tissues in mammals, but there is no evidence to prove that it can directly harm humans. Some scientists hypothesize that, like many other parasites, the Mimi virus has undergone regressive evolution, transitioning from bacteria to virus due to the harsh environment of the deep ocean floor. An estimated 4,700 species live in the Mariana Trench. However, scientists believe many more species are waiting to be discovered, and many questions remain unanswered about how these animals can survive in such harsh conditions. Scientists are particularly interested in the microorganisms living in the trench because they could lead to breakthroughs in medicine and biotechnology. The minuscule inhabitants of the Mariana Trench could provide profound insights into the emergence of life on Earth. Some researchers, such as Patricia Fryer and others at the University of Hawaii, have speculated that the mud volcanoes near oceanic trenches may have provided suitable conditions for the earliest forms of life on our planet. This is why leading research organizations like NASA continue to explore and study the Mariana Trench and other areas across the oceans. NASA Projects there have been rumors suggesting that NASA's exploration and research activities in the mysterious waters of Earth ceased in 1978. However, these are unsubstantiated claims. NASA has been observing the oceans from space for over 20 years and continues to do so today. In 1978, they launched CSAT, the first civilian oceanographic satellite equipped with five additional sensors designed to monitor the oceans from space. Although a major electrical system malfunction ended all data collection activities after just 105 days, the CSAT instruments provided a vast amount of oceanographic data that would have taken ships over 100 years to gather. The variables measured by CSAT during its short existence are among the most important parameters for understanding the oceans and their role in climate. Today, this knowledge continues to be developed, serving various research fields. In fact, it is often asserted that we know more about the surface of Mars and the Moon than we do about the ocean depths on our own planet. NASA is working to change that. The US Space Agency is exploring the deep oceans to search for clues about the shapes of oceans on other planets and to push the boundaries of science and technology in one of the harshest environments on our planet. It's a mission filled with wonder, danger, and considerable explosive potential. It is hoped that the underwater discoveries they make will help unlock some mysteries beyond the universe, while also testing necessary equipment and experiments for missions elsewhere in the solar system. The depths of Earth's oceans surprisingly resemble conditions that NASA expects to find on other worlds in our solar system. They may even provide clues as to where scientists should search for extraterrestrial life. The deepest part of the Earth's ocean is called the Hadal Zone. It is named after Hades, the Greek god of the underworld. It includes deep trenches, with the deepest trench reaching 11 kilometers, 
6.8 miles, below the ocean's surface. They encompass nearly all the conditions of the oceans outside Earth, but there are very few organisms that can survive in this dark abyss. For a considerable period, marine biologists held the belief that life in the Hadal zone was unattainable. However, as deep-sea submersibles began to probe the region in the first half of the 20th century, it gradually became apparent that life could indeed survive there. Initially, it was assumed that all living organisms in the Hadal zone relied on a food chain ultimately driven by photosynthesis. Plants, algae, and certain marine bacteria in surface waters transform the sun's energy into sugars, which they store in their organic matter. This organic matter is then consumed by herbivores, which are in turn preyed upon by carnivorous animals. Scientists were convinced that organisms on the ocean floor sustained themselves with dead organic matter such as animal carcasses, feces, and the continuous descent of other organic detritus or marine snow from above. It was widely believed that there was insufficient food to support sea creatures in the deepest areas, and these regions were considered too dark and cold to sustain life. But this perception of the deep ocean changed in 1977 when a U.S. research team dropped a remotely operated vehicle 8,000 F2,140 miles into the Pacific Ocean. The vehicle was dispatched to take images of hydrothermal vents, where heat from volcanic activity seeped from the ocean floor. To their amazement, the scientists discovered vibrant ecosystems around the vents teeming with marine organisms. These included translucent snailfish and amphipods, tiny flea-like crustaceans that had never been seen before. This marks a completely new way of life here on Earth. These creatures thrive without the need for sunlight, sustaining themselves on chemicals emitted from the ocean floor. The scientists were puzzled. How could organisms in the Hadal zone endure such immense pressure? The pressure down there reaches 15,000 pounds per square inch. It's so intense that the very cells of an organism would be squeezed out. Since first glimpsed in 1977, scientists have discovered that organisms living at such depths have adapted at the cellular level to survive there. Creatures in the Hadal zone, such as giant amphipod crustaceans and snailfish, possess enzymes called piezolites that prevent their cell membranes and proteins from being crushed under extreme pressure. Piezolites counteract pressure by increasing the space that proteins occupy inside the organism's cells to resist the weight of the water surrounding them. Exploring these organisms capable of surviving and thriving in such harsh conditions raises important questions for biologists looking beyond our planet. Could they also be found on other ocean worlds, the super-oceans floating like Earth in outer space? Europa. As the second moon out of a total of 90 moons of Jupiter, Europa is the first world that humans want to explore and search for life. Scientists are almost certain that beneath Europa's icy surface lies a salty ocean with twice as much water as all the water on our planet combined. Sunlight cannot penetrate the hundreds, even thousands of miles thick layer of Europa's forbidding ice crust. And beneath that icy shell, the pressure may be comparable to the Hadal zone. With the idea that if a robot capable of exploring the Hadal zone on Earth could do the same on an icy moon, 628.3 million kilometers, 390.4 million miles away, Russell Smith, an engineer from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, announced plans to test a spacecraft called Orpheus. Scientists agree that under the ocean is a great testing ground for them to develop the necessary technologies for exploring Europa. However, a robot operating in outer space or deep beneath the ocean must be entirely autonomous. It must be able to make decisions while keeping in mind that the purpose is to detect and classify DNA and environmental chemicals in the water, as well as bring back samples from the ocean floor. Furthermore, the materials used to construct the spacecraft also require careful engineering because they must withstand extreme pressure and temperature. The seabed areas in the Hadal zone may only be a few degrees above freezing, but at hydrothermal vent sites, temperatures can rise to 307 degrees 
698DGF, not to mention the darkness of the deep sea environment that may hinder the robot's observation and sampling. As planned, Orpheus will be equipped with a massive battery-powered flashlight. However, if the light is continuously on, it will quickly drain the robot's battery, potentially leaving it stranded at great depths. Therefore, to conserve energy, Orpheus will switch to low power mode when not taking photos or collecting samples. Thus, building a robot for the Hadal Zone is an immensely challenging task. While awaiting Orpheus to carry out missions on Earth, NASA has also launched the Europa Clipper mission aimed directly at Europa, with its primary scientific goal being to determine if any place beneath its icy surface could support life. Detailed exploration of Europa by the mission will help scientists better understand the potential for extraterrestrial biology on potentially habitable worlds beyond our own. The spacecraft will conduct dozens of flybys of Europa, collecting detailed measurements for research purposes. Orbiting around Jupiter, the Europa Clipper will perform approximately 50 close flybys of Jupiter's sixth largest moon at an altitude of about 16 miles, 25 kilometers attempting to cover as many diverse regions as possible. With its large solar arrays and massive radar antennas, Europa Clipper will be the largest spacecraft ever developed by NASA for a planetary mission. The spacecraft measures over 100 feet 30.5 meters in length and has a dry mass, excluding propellant in its tanks, of 7,145 pounds, 3,241 kilo because Europa is bathed in radiation trapped within Jupiter's magnetic field, the payload of Europa Clipper and other electronic equipment will be encapsulated within a thick-walled vault. This method, pioneered and successfully used by NASA's Juno spacecraft, employs a radiation-shielding vault made of titanium and aluminum, acting as an effective radiation barrier significantly reducing the degradation of the spacecraft's electronic components by shielding them from high-energy atomic particles. During its journey, Europa Clipper will carry cameras and spectrometers to capture high-resolution images and map the surface features and thin atmosphere of Europa. Additionally, scientists have equipped it with a penetrating ice-penetrating radar to search for subsurface water as well as a magnetometer and gravity measuring instruments to unlock clues about its ocean and interior depths. The spacecraft will also carry a thermal instrument to identify locations of warmer ice layers and potentially recent water eruptions, as well as tools to measure the composition of small particles in the Moon's thin atmosphere and the space environment around it. Europa Clipper is scheduled to depart Earth in October 2024, and approach Jupiter's orbit by 2030. The spacecraft will launch from Kennedy Space Center in Florida aboard a SpaceX Falcon Heavy rocket, marking a significant milestone in space exploration history. Enceladus. Similar to Europa, Enceladus has also drawn attention due to signs related to the existence of hidden oceans deep beneath its surface. Coincidentally, it is also the sixth moon in order of proximity to the surface of Saturn. Because Enceladus reflects a lot of sunlight, its surface temperature is extremely cold, around 330 degrees Fahrenheit, 201 degrees Celsius. However, it is not as cold and inactive as its appearance may suggest. Enceladus was first considered in 2005 when observers noticed plumes of ice particles and water vapor erupting through cracks in its icy crust and spewing into space at speeds of about 800 miles per hour, 400 meters per second. These eruptions appear to occur continuously, creating a massive icy dust cloud around Enceladus, which supplies material for Saturn's E-ring. However, only a small fraction of the material enters the ring, with most falling back to the moon's surface like snow, helping maintain Enceladus's bright white color. Thanks to observations made by NASA's Cassini spacecraft, researchers discovered that this small moon of Saturn has an ocean of water beneath its icy crust, erupting into space, creating an environment that contains nearly all the basic requirements for life as we know it. 
Some initial studies have suggested that Enceladus began as a mixture of ice and rock and contained rapidly decaying radioactive isotopes of aluminum and iron. The decay of these isotopes over about 7 million years generated a significant amount of heat. The result of this was that rocky material solidified at its core, and it was surrounded by an icy crust. According to this hypothesis, the remaining radioactive decay from the core, along with tidal forces from Saturn's gravitational pull, could continue to heat and melt the inner core of Enceladus over billions of years. Evidence from the Cassini spacecraft indicates that, beneath Enceladus's surface ice layer, could lie a global ocean. The ice crystals analyzed by Cassini have shown to be saltwater ice. It is estimated that such salty water could only occur in a very large volume of water. Thus, Enceladus becomes a promising location for the emergence of life beyond Earth. There is also a hypothesis that the source of water originates from a vast subsurface ocean on Enceladus. In a 2020 study, scientists from the United States, Australia, China, and Germany conducted geochemical modeling to predict the potential amount of biologically accessible phosphorus in the ocean of Enceladus. This is because phosphate in the form of phosphate is essential for all life on Earth, often referred to as the energy currency for all cells. This element is necessary for the creation of DNA and RNA, energy-carrying molecules, cell membranes, bones, and teeth in humans and animals, and even the abundant microbial life of the sea. In the study, Dr. Christopher Glein, the lead scientist at the Southwest Research Institute, and his colleagues performed dynamic and thermodynamic modeling of the geochemistry of phosphorus based on knowledge from Cassini about the subsurface ocean system on Enceladus. It can be said that this is the most detailed geochemical model to date of how minerals at the seafloor dissolve into Enceladus Ocean. By the end of 2022, scientists had indeed discovered five crucial chemical compounds for life within the structure, including carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and sulfur. According to research team leader Hao Jiwa from the University of Science and Technology of China, the seawater on Enceladus has a very high salt content and lacks oxygen, similar to soda water on Earth. In such an environment, it would take about 100,000 years for phosphorus from the rocks at the bottom of the ocean to dissolve into the seawater. However, Enceladus's oceans may have existed for over 100 million years. With such a long history, large amounts of phosphorus from the planet's rocks may have been released into the ocean. Another hypothesis also supports the view that the environment on Enceladus may support life. This is because it possesses a methane-producing process. Archaea microorganisms on Earth perform methane-producing processes in various environmental conditions on our planet and have done so for over 3 billion years, demonstrating their ability to survive. Researchers have developed a new, more detailed simulation of the hypothesis of methanogens on Enceladus to see if they could survive and thrive there. Their simulation is mainly based on the Redfield ratio. They found that although phosphorus is abundant in the Moon's oceans, the overall ratio may be limited in hypothetical cells, meaning no definitive conclusions can be drawn. So where does the prospect of life on Enceladus stand? We are only at the early stages of scientific understanding of biological signs. We can identify individual chemical compounds, but from this great distance, we cannot accurately measure the overall chemical composition of Enceladus. New biometric research aims to determine how biological processes rearrange chemical elements in detectable ways. By considering the entire ecosystem, as Redfield has done, scientists may discover new, less ambiguous biological signs. If successful, we may detect extraterrestrial life forms with chemical organizations in entirely different ways. This research is part of a new effort to detect more biological signs from a chemical perspective, some of which may be false positives. For example, methane gas could be a biological sign, 
but it could also be produced in a non-biological way. Other compounds, like phosphine recently detected on Mars, pose similar questions. After examining biological signs from chemicals, the next step is to understand the factors of the ecosystem. There are numerous astonishing factors to consider, from cell size and nutrient availability to radiation, salinity, temperature. But to understand the overall chemical environment on Enceladus, Europa, or anywhere else, we need more detailed data. Fortunately, science and technology are constantly advancing, so our understanding of life will continue to increase, and old paradigms must evolve. Nature has created countless diverse worlds, each with its own chemical characteristics. While using tools like the Redfield Ratio as a lens is one way to view worlds beyond Earth, we cannot consider it as the ultimate truth. While most of what we can imagine about life in other worlds may seem fantastical and unlikely, life may have found alternative pathways to thrive on Enceladus. There are different ways for life to exist and reorganize chemical components in their territories. Thank you for watching till the end of the video. If you found it interesting, please comment, like, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications for us to address your questions. Goodbye and see you in the next videos.